Dock workers from Maine to Texas go on strike in a move that could spark economic doom. This is brought to us by the New York Post, and it could be bad. I'm telling you right now, it's going to, it's, uh, if you remember the pandemic, the old scam demic, the, there are parts, there are parts of the old scam demic that, that were very real. They were sort of real, but they still had real impacts. Do you, you remember the 10,000, probably 10,000 uh, ships off the coast of California that for some reason, for some reason couldn't offload all of their goods they were just forced to remain out there because you know covid protocols and 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 such right and then everyone would see out there all the ships and they'd go huh this is really really bad and then they're like oh my god it's really bad move the ships so people can't see them and then you know you couldn't you couldn't get any of your items you couldn't get anything it's like oh what you want that treadmill that's going to be a uh, 13 months from now next year you'll get it that kind of thing this, dock workers from Maine to Texas to go on strike. That's a little bit of that. It won't be full-blown that, but it's going to be a little bit of that. The, the dock workers are super important, super vital. Much like when, um, and, 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 I don't, I personally don't believe they should be allowed to go on strike. Much like doctors, police officers, firefighters, paramedics, I don't, um, you know, usually the important emergency workers, they don't, they're not allowed to go on strike, um, but they can, but they, but they can do work action, right? Um, I, I think they, they 100% should be able to do some sort of work action. I don't know what that would look like, but they're too vital. They're too important to be allowed to strike. Now you might say, but that takes away their, their, their bargaining chips. Sure. I understand, but they're too vital. It could literally absolutely devastate an economy that is already one foot in the grave and the other on a banana peel. The economy is in a lot of trouble. We're, we've been in a recession for a very long time, a very long time. They, the, uh, the Biden uh, regime was all like, no, 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 we're not because we're totally fine because look at this thing. We, of course, said yes, but it, we've had, you know, a certain amount of uh, consecutive quarters with negative growth. That's a recession. It's always been a recession. That's what we've called it. That's, if you go back, I don't know how many years, that's in the economy books that we teach the kids. And they go, no, 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 that's wrong. It's wrong. I'm like, it's weird that it's wrong now, but it was never wrong before. Weird. The, the economy is in a recession. It's been a, for a long time. This is going to absolutely be a stake through the heart. Dock workers at dozens of ports stretching along the east and Gulf Coast walked the picket line after midnight on Tuesday as they launched a massive strike that threatened to reignite inflation and spark product shortages at the start of the holiday season. I even forgot about Christmas. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Maybe think about Christmas gifts right now, I guess, if you can. The work stoppage went into effect at 12.01 a.m. on Tuesday after the International Longshoremen's Association, which represents 45,000 workers and the alliance representing ports, failed to renew a collective bargaining agreement that had just expired. I seriously hope that they can, they can come to uh, an agreement soon. Because if, if I'm not mistaken, it's going to be billions of dollars a day lost in the economy. Like two, f three, four billion dollars every single day. So for the first time since 1977, 36 ports stretching from strategic seaboard locations as far north as Maine and as far south as Texas, all of which handle an aggregate three trillion in the country's annual international trade will be idle due to a work stoppage. So then so then what? What happens? Do boats then go through the Panama Canal and try to get offloaded on the West Coast? Is that what's going to happen? Leaving 10,000 boats waiting for their, for their chance? Or do they say, well, I guess we just wait here. We'll park up beside, you know, Florida where the waters are nice and we'll just wait. Maybe we'll get our binoculars and we'll look out. Maybe we'll see some some girls in bikinis or something while we just wait for the strike to end. 
Like, what is the plan? The labor dispute in which longshoremen are demanding higher wages and protections against automation of their jobs puts a pause on billions of dollars worth of daily trade and threatens to cause significant damage to an economy that has already been beset by stubbornly persistent inflation. So, I mean, yeah, okay. So inflation is going way high, right? If you don't get a raise, you're actually getting less money. That's just a matter of fact, right? If, if you don't get um, a, a, a raise of at least what inflation is, then you're, act, you're making less money. Your dollar goes as, you know, it doesn't go as far. So I can, un, I can understand them wanting to make the same amount of money relatively to what inflation was. I, I get that. I get that. But the thing about protections against automation of their jobs is other countries around the world they have figured out how to do a lot of this stuff by robots china japan um south korea they they can they can they can get a lot of robots to do a, a lot of these things so striking making the problem really 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 bad doesn't make people go oh yes i i understand you you don't want robots to take your job all that does is inflame people to be like, when we figure this shit, I'm putting robots in here so this doesn't happen again. It also comes at a critical time when authorities are in need of supplies and goods to deliver in hopes of helping parts of the Southeast recover from the devastating effects of Hurricane Helene. Yeah, you know, it's kind of funny. So th there's kind of a recession, right? There's kind of super high inflation. We kind of have an election. We kind of have, you know, a fortification of the election. You know, they're going to try and steal that again. Um, we, we have this hurricane and the damage. We have uh, now this strike and a myriad of other things going on. And fucking assassination attempts every five minutes. Um, it. I don't know. It feels like we're building up to something. You know, when you watch like a, a movie trailer or or something like that, and and it's got that music that that is building up, and, and maybe there's like a beat or a drum beat or something, and it goes faster and faster and faster and faster and faster up until it gets to whatever conclusion it's trying to make. It feels like we're doing that a little bit. There's just so much things happening. I mean, that's just in the in the West, in, in America, Canada, all of that. You still got everything in, in, in the Middle East, Ukraine, Russia. Like, I mean, it's just, there's so much like building up. Like, what kind of black swan event are we building up to? Ports throughout the Southeast and the Gulf lost power while congestion piled up as a result of the massive storm. Retailers like Walmart, Ikea, Samsung, Bob's Discount Furniture, LG, and Home Depot that rely on imported goods have the most exposure to the damages that would ensure that would ensue, rather, if the uh, strike were to be prolonged. Workers began picketing at the port of Philadelphia shortly after midnight, walking in a circle at a rail crossing outside the port and chanting, no work without a fair contract. And I mean, I want, I want them to have a fair contract. 100%. I just don't want the economy to collapse into rubble because of what they're doing. So, yeah. Some kind of work action, I don't know. So when police strike, or at least when police here in Ontario strike, they usually alter their uniform somehow. Um, so police are not allowed to wear ball caps while on, while on duty. Um, and so they will wear like a police ball cap. It it doesn't it doesn't really um, doesn't really change much, but you kind you kind of know what's going on, right? So maybe they'll wear like a police union ball cap. Or, or something. It's, it's, it's minimal, but it's a way that they can make their point while still doing the things that they need to do. Now, maybe there's something like that they can do, some kind of work action. Maybe they, I don't know if they can be legislated to go back to work, but uh, these, these guys are critical. They're probably, I'd say, worth their weight in gold because if you can't get this stuff off the boats, onto the trucks, you know, everything collapses. The people on the boats are important. The people that get the stuff off the boats are important. The people that drive the trucks are important. The people that drive the trains are important. 
Even the people that take the shit off of the trucks and off of the trains, they're important too. It's just like the whole logistics chains. People overlook it as, as a nothing fucking job, but we've seen it. We've seen it in the pandemic. It, you want to talk about an essential worker? The logistics chain. Essential. Vital. We can't survive without them. So to me, this strike is a pretty big deal. The United States Maritime Alliance, um, USMX, uh, the umbrella group representing the managers of the ports sought to avert a strike at the last minute late on Monday, offering a 50% wage hike over six years. I mean, that's, that's not bad. I mean, that's pretty good. But the ILA rejected the offer, according to CNBC. Port ownership hoped that the offer would lead to renewed talks between the two sides. I don't think it's, I just, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's just the money. You can have all the money, but they're like, well, we, we are, we are longshoremen. This is what we do. You can give me all the money in the world. That doesn't mean anything if I know I'm going to be replaced by a robot. All the money in the world means nothing if it means next year I don't have a job. The union appears to have dug in on its demands. In a recent video, IAL president uh, Harold Daggett told rank and file members who voted unanimously to authorize the strike, we'll crush them. And I, I, I take his word for it. Daggett was seen addressing union members, workers, union workers at mayor terminals in Elizabeth, New Jersey, early Tuesday in a video that was posted to Instagram. This is going to go down in history. What we're doing here, he told the union members, they can't survive too long. And they know it. They know that they have the entire economy over a barrel. Before Monday, it had uh, been weeks since both sides sat down to talk about a new contract. With negotiations at a standstill, the launch of the strike was anticipated. Several major ports, including Boston, New York, New Jersey, Philadelphia, Baltimore, Houston, and Miami, began to wind down operations in advance of the work stoppage. New York governor and massive cunt, Kathy Hochul, uh, released a statement um, just after midnight on Tuesday saying that her state has been working around the clock to ensure that our grocery stores and medical facilities have essential products they need. I mean, and also don't, don't forget, please, please remember, always remember that Kathy Hochul was, you know, part of the fednapping plot to, um, you know, fednap her. She's a liar. And a crook. Barring a dramatic breakthrough in talks, shippers won't have the option of rerouting cargo to West Coast ports due to limits on capacity in handling more containers. Well, I, I guess that sort of answers that question that I had asked you earlier. Um, barring a dramatic breakthrough in talks, shippers won't have the option of rerouting cargo to the West because of limits on capacity. So these what these ships just wait then they just wait off the off the east coast because the entire global logistics chain is connected um some of these ships not not all of the not all of the um the containers are for america right maybe you have like 100,000 containers on a ship and so maybe 20,000 of them are for america and so then they'll take them off and then they'll and then they'll go okay now we have to go to canada and then from Canada, we'll go to wherever is the next place to go. If these ships are stuck in Miami, off the coast of Miami, because they can't unload the stuff, then everything that's due for Canada or due for Mexico or wherever else doesn't, doesn't get offloaded. And that begins to impact the entire world's supply chain because stuff gets stuck on these boats because it, it can't be offloaded again. We know this because we saw that literally happen in the pandemic. The Dock Workers Union representing workers out west secured a new labor contract recently, so they will not be joining the strike. Thank heavens for that. But those dock workers, as well as their counterparts in Canada, are unlikely to agree to handle East Coast goods in a show of solidarity with striking union members. <laughs> oh, God. So even. Even if these ships waiting are like, okay, listen, this is what we're going to do. We're going to go to, uh, we're going to go to uh, New Brunswick or we're going to go to uh, Newfoundland or Nova Scotia, whatever. We're going to unlock, 
un unload everything off, and we'll just ship it by truck. We'll get lots of trucks, all the trucks. We'll just ship it down and no, because because they won't take it. Canada won't take it either. You can be sure the ILA's 85,000 members will be supporting their sisters and brothers. James McNamara, a spokesperson for the International Longshore and Warehouse Union, which represents stock workers on the West Coast, said in a statement. Supply chain experts say consumers won't see an immediate impact from the strike because most retailers stocked up on goods moving ahead of um, shipments for holidays. But if it goes more than a few weeks, a work stoppage would significantly snarl the nation's supply chain, potentially leading to higher prices and delays in goods reaching households and businesses. If drawn out, the strike will force businesses to pay shippers for delays and cause some goods to arrive late for peak holiday shopping season, potentially impacting delivery of anything from toys to artificial Christmas trees to cars to coffee and fruit. The strike will likely have almost an immediate impact on supplies of perishable imports like bananas, for example. Bananas are a big deal in my house. Just as, as an aside, my kids go through like two bananas a day. Each kid, four kids. Is that eight, eight bananas? Like a bunch of, a little, a bunch of bananas every single day. My kids love bananas. They can't get enough. The ports affected by strike handle 3.8 million metric tons of bananas each year, which is basically what my kids eat. In, in a year or 75 percent of the nation's supply <laughs> it could also uh, snarl imp uh, exports from uh, east coast ports and create traffic jams at ports on the west coast where workers are represented by a different union railroads say they can ramp up to carry more freight from the west coast but analysts say they can't make the cargo handled to the east or sorry, they can't make up the cargo handle to the east. If the strikes go ahead, they will cause enormous delays across the supply chain and a ripple effect, which will no doubt roll into 2025 and cause chaos across the industry. You know, there is a uh, conspiracy theory. So if you do have some tinfoil, make sure you put it on your hat. And that conspiracy theory is that obviously Kamala is going to lose. But you're going to make the economy so bad for Donald Trump that there's no way that he can make America great again, that they're just going to absolutely nuke everything. And they're going to be like, fine then, be the president over rubble then. You know what I mean? They're like, if, if we can't be president, then you can't either. That kind of thing. So JP Morgan estimates that a strike that shuts down the East and Gulf Coast ports could cost the economy 3.8 to 4.5 but a billion dollars per day with some of that recovered over time after normal operations resume the strike comes just weeks before the election and could become a factor if there are shortages i think it'll be interesting to see if maybe tonight at the at the uh, vp debate if they make any mention of that i don't know i think that would be i think that would be uh something so Thank you for uh, watching this video. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye for now.